Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, and we're going to talk about Stranger Things, and we're going to have to, we're going to talk about what Stranger Things says about gatekeeping for Dungeons and Dragons, specifically at the party level. All right, so there's some gatekeeping that happens in Stranger Things, and Stranger Things, an official D and D approved product, right? Watsi has signed off on Stranger Things and continues to do so as they continue to create and produce and sell an official Dungeons and Dragons Stranger Things product. They are those those two products are co-signing each other, right? Um, and and Stranger Things has a lot to say about Dungeons and Dragons because it's made by two people who played a lot of Dungeons and Dragons, right? And uh, the the Duffer Brothers. Uh, so so check this out, right? Stranger Things has a specific thing to say about gatekeeping, which I thought was fascinating. So where is the gatekeeping happening? All right, so the party, uh, uh, Whale DM, Will, Lucas, Dustin, Mike. That's the party. That's the original crew, okay? Mike meets L. He don't care about adding her to the party. He has a romantic interest in her, and he wants to add her to the party to put her in proximity to himself, right? By the way, trust and believe... This ain't new. This happens a lot. People definitely play Dungeons and Dragons in order to. Uh, there are a distinct number of people who play Dungeons and Dragons simply to be in proximity to other people or people they want to be in proximity to, for romantic freeze reasons and for non-romantic reasons. There are non-romantic reasons why somebody would want to be in proximity to another person. I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, Joe Manganiola. Um, we just told a story on uh, Seth, Ma Seth, Seth Meyers' show that he did not want to bring new people into his Dungeons & Dragons game because they were already at eight players. And the uh, creator of Game of Thrones wanted to join. And he's like, yeah, we'll bring them, we'll bring them in. Right? Like, and, you know, like just brought them in. Right? So, so basically, Lucas is... So, Lucas, so Mike wants to bring in Elle. He doesn't want to bring her for a good reason. She, he just want, literally wants to bring her in. To, for romantic reasons, which is a terrible, brace, a terrible reason to bring anybody into a Dungeons and Dragons game, right? Especially that has an open table that you know it's not. Maybe if you're playing with your, you know, with your loved one, and it's just you and them, maybe it's okay. Otherwise, it's a pretty bad reason, in my opinion, right? So, um, so Lucas calls him out and goes, "No, nah, man, we are not bringing L into the party, right?" So he gatekeeps her, right? And immediately, Mike comes back and is like, "Oh, because she's a girl." And he goes, no, it's not Reese Free because she's a girl. It's because she's a liar, right? And she specifically is putting her own agenda in front of the agenda of the party. She cares more for her needs than she cares for our needs, right? And so Lucas, Lucas is essentially saying, I'm going to gatekeep her, right? And and he does, like, and you know, he he keeps her out, and then L is added to the party, but this is very important. She is only added to the party when she has told the truth and when she has stopped putting her own needs in front of the needs of the party. So basically, I think the, the, the lesson that the lesson Stranger Things teaches about gatekeeping is gatekeeping is 100% okay, right? You cannot gatekeep on any attribute someone is born with, right? cannot gatekeep based on their orientation, you cannot gatekeep based on their gender, you cannot gatekeep based on their race, right? But if they are making a personal choice and they are not putting the needs of the Dungeons and Dragons party in front of their, if they're putting their own needs in front of the Dungeons and Dragons party needs, they can absolutely be gatekept, right? And actually should be gatekept until they stop their behavior and and specifically apologize to the D&D party. Then they should be brought in and allowed in. I 100% agree with that. I 100% agree with that. I think it is absolutely horrific and and un um, and terrible to gatekeep a person for any reason they're born with, right? If their their orientation, their gender, their race, absolutely no gatekeeping based on the criteria. If they have a behavior as a person that any of those other attributes could have, 
a person of any race could, you know, could hold their own agenda before the agenda of the D&D party. A person of any orientation could be, hold their own agenda above the agenda of, a, of the D&D party. A person of any, um, you know, gender could hold their own agenda in front of the agenda of the, of the D&D party. If their selfishness outweighs their, um, their goodwill toward the party... If there are simply behaviors that the party is not comfortable with that are not attached to something that someone is born with, then that's it. You're done, right? Like, you could absolutely gatekeep that. That, in my humble opinion, is the lesson that Stranger Things brings forward on gatekeeping. And I 100% agree with it. I'm here, I'm here for it. Like, I'm here, like, yeah, gatekeeping is fine as long as it's based on behavior that any human could attach to themselves by choice, right? All that's my opinion. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Have a wonderful, uh, please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.